friends, this is Hedda. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to take you through the books that I read during March and show you the spreads that I made in my reading journal for said books. I think March was quite a good reading month for me. I read a few different books, so I'm pretty happy about that. Before we get into the journaling though, a quick thank you to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of different classes on anything from crocheting and videography to how to set up and run a small business. I found so much value in different Skillshare classes. And one that I've recently watched is Sean Dalton's class called Short Form Video, Create Viral Videos for Instagram Reels and TikTok. I mean, I've never had a video go viral, so definitely need some guidance. <laughs> Dalton is a travel photographer, so his examples are very much about like those kinds of videos. But I find that the tips and the concepts that he introduces in his class is very applicable to other niches as well, even mine. I definitely want to learn how to make better content online since this is kind of my job. <laughs> and working with the recipe can make the process so much easier. And I love that you can find little classes like this on Skillshare. I mean, this class is one hour long. It's not that much time to invest and you can learn a lot from it. The first 500 people to click the link in the description box will get a one month free trial to Skillshare. You can take as many classes as you like during that trial month, so definitely make use of this offer. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the journaling and the reading. <laughs> If you've been following along with my reading journal videos this year, you know that my notebook is from Leela Journals. It has a little tulip illustration on the cover and this month my cover page will match it with this beautiful sticker from Sibylline Maynette. I absolutely love this sticker. It's very powerful. I, I kind of wanted to use it for February, but one of you guys suggested I should use it for March because it is a very fitting symbol for Women's Day, which was March 8th. So I decided to use it for my March cover page. And although I just released a huge sticker collection with a bunch of tulips, I decided to not use any of those on this cover page because the sticker definitely has more red and orange tones, whereas the stickers I made are more on the pink side. So instead, I got out this washi tape from the washi tape shop. I've had this for ages and I rarely use it and I always feel bad about not using my stationery <laughs> and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to use more of this washi tape. It is actually mostly girl stickers on this washi tape, but there are also some tulips and daffodil bouquets. And I decided to layer them kind of behind the Sibylline Maynette sticker. Because there is a white border around the sticker, I'm not too worried about it becoming overwhelming, although the tulip and daffodil washi tape is very bright in color and maybe even a little bit messy. But because of the white border, I know that there will be this kind of separation between the stickers and that means it will look a lot more tidy than if there was no border. So that's why I actually really like white borders around stickers. I know some people don't really like it. They want it to look like flush with the page underneath, but I actually prefer it because it makes collaging a lot easier. It makes it less likely that the spread will feel messy and overwhelming, if that makes sense. On the right side of my cover page for March is where I will write down which books I read during March. And here I chose to use some of these frames that I got from Japan. These are from Oeda Letterpress. I would have liked to have frames that had like a fitting color, maybe the same teal color or the reds that are in the sticker, but didn't have any of that. So I chose frames with a black border. I chose two different sizes because I felt like it would look more interesting with one longer frame and three smaller ones instead of doing all four with the small square, so that's what I did. It just changes it up a little, looks a little bit more interesting in my opinion. And I layered a little bit of like old book paper and some more tulip washi tape. And then I just used my scotch glue stick to glue it all down to kind of do the finishing touches. I made sure to not layer all of the tulips underneath, but I did some tulips 
like underneath the frames and then some tulips in the front especially in front of the larger frame because this way one the frame wouldn't be as large but also two it would look a little bit more dynamic is that i don't know if that's the right word a bit more balanced like a little bit more 3d <laughs> As a little title, I just wrote books I read this month up top. And then of course I have the March title on the left side of the spread. Overall, I'm actually really happy with this cover page. I think it looks really pretty. It is fairly simple, but there's still a lot going on. So yeah, I really like that. As you can see from the number of frames, I read four books in March. So now we're gonna go through all of them one by one. And the first book that I read in March was The Wicked King by Holly Black. This is the second book in the Folk of the Air trilogy by Holly Black. The first book is The Cruel Prince. The layout of this spread and also the other spreads that I made for the books that I read this month is inspired by Perceive Grace. It's definitely not like her reading journal spreads, but seeing her spreads kind of just gave me an idea for this kind of sidebar here. I don't normally put the book covers on the spreads because I like to just do random themes for each book and once I have a book cover on the spread I feel like I have to make the rest of the spread work with that. So obviously this book cover for The Wicked King is very blue and so going with just a random color here would just look really strange. So putting the book covers on the spreads does make it so that I have to follow the color scheme a little bit. And that's why I normally don't do it. But I thought this month I'm gonna try, I'm gonna use this layout and just try something a little bit different because I usually do the exact same thing every month <laughs> and I just wanted to change it up a little bit. And of course I was okay with using some blue stationery for the spread. So basically in the sidebar, I have a little bit of information about the book. So I have the author, the genre, the format that I read it in. So this one I read as an ebook on my Kindle. So I wrote down that I read it as an ebook and also how many pages it was, uh, what kind of genre, the year it was published. So just a little bit of fun information like that. And then I used one of my rating stickers from my shop, ikigaipapir.com. And then at the bottom of the sidebar, I'm gonna have a little quote from the book. So that was kind of the structured part of the spread and then the rest of the spread is going to be uh, just like all of the other spreads that I normally do every month. I used some washi tape that my friend Lena sent to me, but it is by La Dolce Vita. So the girl stickers here are from La Dolce Vita. As far as I know, they're a Chinese or Taiwanese artist. I absolutely love their art, it's so pretty. I combined it with some BGM washi tape, which is one of my favorite washi tape brands out there. Some old book paper, some floral pet tape that one of you guys sent to me, and also these blue circle stickers that one of you guys sent to me. I also used some cloud stickers from Tree to Puss Studio. And overall, I'm actually really happy with this spread. It's sometimes a little bit difficult for me to feel super happy with blue themes. It, I still struggle with it, even though I feel like I challenge myself to do it over and over again. And most of the time I'm happy with them, but this one I'm extra, extra happy with. <laughs> For the title, I used a blue ink pad and I stamped the title with these typewriter alphabet stamps that I got from Michaels in the US. And if you ask me whether I liked this book or not, I'm going to say that this is on the lower end of the scale for me. I really struggled getting through the first book in the series and I struggled maybe even more getting through this one. The only reason I am reading this series is because one of my friends has been hyping it up for me and telling me that it's really great, saying that the third book is really good and it kind of connects a lot of the loose threads and, and just makes the story better. But so far, I don't know, I just can't get into it. And I think part of the reason is because I have no sympathy with any of the characters. 
because all the characters are awful. <laughs> and I'm gonna say something that kind of goes against what I usually say, because I like morally great characters. I think it makes stories interesting when there isn't a clear good and bad system. And I actually really like hero to villain stories because I think those stories feel more real to me. And so I was trying to figure out why I didn't like this story because it has all of those components. Like it, it doesn't have any clear like good characters. All the characters are pretty bad as in like bad people. And technically not many of them are people. So I'm not quite sure. I can't like put my finger down on what it is exactly that makes this not good, but it just doesn't capture my attention and I don't really care for what's gonna happen. I don't feel like the overarching story is entertaining enough. And so it makes me not really care about what's gonna happen to the characters, whether they are good or bad. It could be because this is a young adult novel and I, <laughs> I am not a young adult. I am 30 years old and maybe I would have been all over this book when I was, I don't know, 10 years younger. Maybe I just don't relate to the main character as much because of that. I just feel like she makes so many decisions that make no sense and it, that kind of annoys me. At the same time though, I always say that just because I don't like the characters doesn't mean that the book is bad. And I stand by this still. Just because I don't like the characters doesn't make the book a bad book. It just makes it less entertaining for me. And since that is what my rating system is all about, like how entertaining a book is for me, uh, I only gave it two hearts, sadly. But now that I am two books in, I might as well read the third one. So it'll probably take me like half a year to get through it, but you know, I'll probably try. <laughs> I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on this book series. So if you've read them, please let me know what you think about them in the comments. So maybe I can get some new perspectives or some different ideas about this book that will make me see it in a different light because I would love that. The next book I read in March is one that was also recommended to me for the longest time. It's by Martha Wells. It's called All Systems Red. And I listened to this as an audiobook. It is a short book, a novella. So only a couple of hours, I think, as an audiobook. So very short. And I really liked this one. This book is part of a series that is called The Murderbot Diaries, which in itself is a really funny name. And it sounds a lot more badass than it really is. I mean, yes, the main character is a robot and they are pretty badass, but not in the murderbot type of way. Although, you know, I have a lot more of these to read, so maybe things will get a little bit more murderous. Since it is such a short book, I would kind of equate it to like a, a, a short arc in a longer series. If you guys have watched TV shows like The Witcher, for example, there are shorter arcs or like shorter episodes with dealing with one specific monster before moving on, but then there is kind of this overarching story and this journey that the main character is on and they just like have to deal with smaller problems along the way. <laughs> I don't know if I'm explaining it right, but that's what this feels like. There is no world building, you just get thrown directly into action and I actually really enjoyed that. There is a lot of things in this book where you kind of just have to, you just have to go with the flow. And there are lots of things you just have to guess at, lots of things that aren't explained. It's just, you know, they are the way that they are. And it's oddly refreshing in a way. So I really enjoyed that about this novella. And I will be reading the next books to it. There are a few novellas and one novel and I'm just really excited. I think that this is gonna be great. The book cover for this book is very much just gray and I didn't want to do a gray theme, so I went with purple. 
in a way it was easier to just choose a random color scheme because the cover is so neutral so i guess i should appreciate that this purple washi tape is from one of notebook therapy's lucky bags and i combined it with some old book paper these watercolor looking stickers from mindwave my favorite stickers ever i love these i have them in all kinds of colors and then I also used some stickers that I got from Sticky Club. Sticky Club is a sticker subscription where you get a package of stickers from different artists every month. And I was a member for a little while last year or the year before. And I have so many of those stickers that I haven't used because you just kind of have one sheet with that theme. And so I find it a little bit difficult to use, but they are actually perfect for my reading journal spreads since i just need to make one spread fit the theme and not an entire setup so i had a lot of fun with this just used some stickers that i don't normally use i used the same alphabet stamps as on the previous spread for the title all systems red and then i also used the typewriter alphabet stamp from notebook therapy to stamp the murderbot diaries one underneath I chose a different pen to write with because on the first spread I actually used my pen from the Sailor Moon Museum in Roppongi that I got last year pretty much exactly one year ago and I got the pen because it was from the Sailor Moon Museum but it was actually not that great to write with in my journal so I went back to my Muji gel pen because nothing can beat the Muji gel pen they are my favorite pens and nobody can tell me otherwise <laughs> If you have read the Murderbot Diaries, no spoilers in the comment section, please. I am very excited to read these books, so yeah, I don't want anything spoiled. <laughs> also, let me remind you that I put most of the supplies that I use in the description box below with links and everything, as long as I have links. So definitely check out the description box if you see me use anything that you are interested in getting for yourself. That's it for this spread, and now we can move on to the third book that I read in March, which is technically not a book, it is a graphic novel. I haven't read any manga since like last year, but sometimes I just feel like I need a brain break, and this manga, Kyokai no Rinne, is the best brain break ever. It's so silly, so funny, I haven't even gotten that far, this is the fourth volume. When I was a teenager, like when I was in middle school, I would read so much manga. It's what I spent all of my money on, basically. I got a job so that I could buy more manga because it was really expensive in Norway to, to buy them, especially because a lot of them were imported and in English, the publishers in Norway didn't really translate very many mangas to Norwegian, but I got the few that were translated to Norwegian because they were a little bit cheaper. But yeah, um, Kyokai no Rinne is from one of my favorite manga authors ever, Takahashi Rumiko, and it started in 2009 actually, so quite a long time ago, but I've just started reading it, or I guess I started reading it like last summer. It's so funny, so silly, and very much similar to her other mangas like Ranma and Inuyasha, Yurusei Atsura. So I wouldn't say that it's original because it definitely has a very similar story. Like all of her manga stories are, are pretty similar, but it, it's just so funny. I absolutely love it. If you watched the video where I made a spread for the first three volumes, you might remember that I was unsure about how I would make spreads for manga in my reading journal and back then I read three volumes in one month and so I just made one spread for all three but this time since I only read one volume during March I didn't want to wait to make the spread until I read like two more volumes or whatever so I decided to just make the spread for that one volume because it's fine I have so many pages in this journal because the paper is a little bit thinner than journals I normally use. I think it's 120 GSM. And so I have a lot more pages than I had in my previous reading journal. 
and you might remember that even though I ripped out a bunch of pages from that journal, I still had a few left over at the end of the year. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I just need to make more spreads in this notebook to fill it up completely. Otherwise, I won't be able to start a new one in January. I mean, I guess I could. I just wouldn't feel as good about it. <laughs> These shiny gold moon stickers are also from Sticky Club. I figured I would just use them the way I use any other circle stickers and it kind of worked out well. It really fit with the gold details of the other stickers, or rather the pet tapes. This Asian-inspired pet tape was sent to me by one of you guys, so I have no idea where it's from. And these are the only pieces that I got, so I've literally just used all of them. <laughs> but I think they worked well. I know that Takahashi Rumiko's characters there's always a lot of red she always uses a lot of red but i really wanted to use these gold and kind of yellow stickers so that's what i did i printed out a picture of the main characters this is not from this volume specifically i just googled in the manga and this is what came up and i think that that's fine <laughs> i don't normally use pictures from books or like fan art or anything but since this is a graphic novel i thought it would just be very fitting to have a picture of the main characters here i wish i could have found a piece from the specific volume that i read but it's hard to to find that unless you download some illegal scan or something and i don't really want to do that so <laughs> this is what we've got i give this four stars because uh, yes it's super funny and super entertaining and i love it but it is also not the like best manga that i have read i think and that is probably because i have read danma i have read inuyasha and so this doesn't feel very original to me that is like my only complaint about this manga other than that you know it's great i would recommend it i think it's really really funny and i think more people could use some of this silliness in their lives the fourth and last book that i read in march is one that was not on my tbr at all it was actually a bit of a coincidence that i picked up this book at all this is the man in the high castle by philip k dick um i don't know why americans have these names <laughs> but they do <laughs> i randomly picked up this book because i i saw it on audible just scrolling through some stuff i listened to this as an audiobook i remember seeing a tv show called the man in the high castle and it turns out it was based on this novel i didn't realize that it was so old when i downloaded it because this was actually written in 1962 and i have had uh, experiences with books from the 60s before and uh, with this i had the exact same experience as those <laughs> it is written very differently from books written today by american authors i find it is kind of a dystopian sci-fi book without spoiling anything the premise of the book is that nazi germany and imperial japan and also i guess italy won the second world war and have kind of divvied up the us between them so the west coast is ruled by Japan and parts of the East Coast is run by Nazi Germany. There are some areas in between that are divided up differently. And this is the world that this book is set in. I thought that the premise was very interesting. It is an interesting thought experiment. As a European, I was taught a lot about World War II when I was in school, all through elementary school to high school. That was a big part of history class. And so, you know, reading books about that time is very depressing to me. And I was very curious to see what this book would be like. It has so many interesting ideas, like things that the different powers have done, like Nazi Germany has drained the Mediterranean Sea to get Lebensraum and to like farm the land. And it sounds really silly, but it's also like, huh, I never would have thought of that. <laughs> 
there is a lot of racism in this book. It goes in every direction, I feel like. Slavery is very prevalent in this book. It's like slavery has been reintroduced in the US at least in the parts run by the foreign powers. The I Ching is very central in this book, which I also found very interesting and different. Overall, this book is just very different and it, it gave me a lot of negative emotions. I think a lot of the racism is very uncomfortable to read. In the beginning, I wasn't quite sure if it was necessary to the book. It made me feel very uncomfortable and I and I had to read about uh, the author afterwards because you just never know, it's a book from the 60s, like was this used just for the book to kind of drive the point home or was the author a racist? <laughs> But from what I could tell, he wasn't. And I think he even said in an interview that he tried writing a sequel to this book, but he just couldn't uh, do it because it was so depressing doing the research and he just felt really awful writing it because of all of the like horrible ideologies and, and events um, that's happening. So that made me feel a little bit better about it, I guess. <laughs> I will say it is a very interesting thought experiment and I can definitely appreciate that about this book. Now what I didn't particularly like is the, the writing style just because it is a book from the 60s, it is very open, there are so many things that you kind of just have to assume or imagine from the book. There is a lot of reading between the lines and as someone not from the 60s sometimes that is a little bit difficult when, when reading an older book like this. So that was a little bit difficult and at times it felt a little bit slow, M maybe not even a little bit, it felt very slow. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's not that long of a book, really. The ending is very open as well. It kind of felt like a slice of life book. Since I lived in Japan for many years, I have watched a lot of Japanese movies and, and read a lot of books by Japanese authors and slice of life, that genre, is very popular there where you just kind of, you, you just have a little slice of someone's life and it's very mundane and it's very slow and nothing dramatic happens and just a little peek into someone's life it's like the modern day vlogs that's really what it is <laughs> and uh, this book felt a little bit like that actually it felt like a slice of life in a world where the axis forces won the war so yeah interesting so those were the books that I read during March and now I'll do a little flip through of all of the spreads that I made so that we can take a little look at them all together. I actually really enjoyed this layout with the like the info bar kind of on the left side and then the rest of the spread is as usual. I thought that it was kind of fun and I might continue doing that. I'm not sure. We'll see. I also kept it fairly cohesive by doing all of the titles with the same stamps. And so that's also something that I enjoyed, even though the themes are all completely different, different colors, different stickers. It still keeps it fairly cohesive. And sometimes structure is good and sometimes structure is bad. And this time I felt like I got the best of both worlds. A little bit of structure, but also a little bit of chaos. And <laughs> I do really like that. <laughs> That's all for today. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. One thing that I didn't show in the video is that I have added these tabs to my reading journal. I actually got these tabs such a long time ago and kind of forgot about them because they were in the bottom of a drawer. But after I was filming these reading journal spreads, I decided to add these tabs and I think that they're looking really nice. They're like very small and they don't stick out very far. So I like that. And so far I have three months in here. Don't forget to check out that link in the description box for a one month free trial to Skillshare. Other than that, I hope that you're all having a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye.